Okay, if you have ever had long hair and thought about doing layers, but maybe you had a bad experience or you're just terrified of doing them in general, I'm gonna share some secrets that I've learned over 25 years of doing hair that are going to change everything for you and hopefully pull some of that fear out of you about doing layers because not having layers on long hair, that's like the biggest mistake that I see. And if you've watched part one of this three-part series, we went over some of the common mistakes I see behind the chair when it comes to having longer hair. So today in this video, I'm gonna break down an actual haircut and show you exactly how I avoid all of these mistakes, how I avoid making hair look thin when it's long and we layer it, even if you've got thin, fine hair, how to avoid having layers that are too short because that ends up looking a bit like a mullet, right? Or how to avoid all of the concerns of choppiness that are happening in layers. I promise you, you can have long hair, you can have layers and have none of those issues, even if you have thin, fine hair. It's just how it's done. So today, I'm gonna go through a pretty technical video here, but if you're not a stylist, I'm gonna make this extremely simple. So as you can see right now, we've got my lovely wife here who has been kind enough to help me out on this. She has no idea what we're gonna do with her hair. I'm probably gonna jack it up. <laughs> but what you're gonna notice in her hair is, even though she has some layers in her hair, her layers, her layers, we call them internal layers, so layers in the back, her internal layers are very long in comparison to her length. I get asked all the time, can I have long layers? Do long layers make sense? And I'll tell you, long layers are great for a tiny bit of movement at the very end, but as you can see, this shape, you cannot get a lot of volume in areas that we wanna create volume to accentuate things about her face shape because even though she has layers, these layers are long, meaning that that hair is long. And the longer hair gets, the harder it is to create volume in it because it becomes heavy. No matter what texture you have, it just, that's how hair works. So even though she's got some movement and some layers in it, in my opinion, she doesn't have enough layering to really reap the benefits of having layering. She has enough layering to get a little bit of movement and a lot of the detriments of having layers, potentially. So what we're gonna do right now is I'm gonna get her hair wet and then we're gonna walk through the actual process step-by-step step of what I do, why I do it, so that you don't have to worry about those mistakes. If you're doing this on your hair at home, I have an entire masterclass where I teach people how to do these kinds of things on their hair at home and make it really simple. If you're already in my masterclass, just so you're aware, this particular haircut, the recipe for this would be to follow the one length haircut, then the front layer haircut, and then complete with the layering, the long layer haircut, and you're gonna achieve what I'm achieving right now. If you are unaware of that masterclass, I actually have a free webinar that you can check out too where I share mistakes, eyes, common mistakes people make when they do their hair at home, both cutting and okay. coloring. We talk all about it. So if you wanna jump on that, you can actually, there's a link in the description below where you can register to check out that webinar. But just so you know, you can use these techniques at home or at the salon to better explain what you're doing or what you want from your hair. So the first thing that we're gonna talk about is simply what length do you cut it? So if you watched the first video in this series, and if you haven't, I'll link it at the end of this video so that you can make sure to check that out. But if you watched the first video, we talked a little bit about the length issues and the concern of having it too long for your particular texture. And one of the keys to that is making sure that whatever length you have, that the ends don't start looking so thin that one, they stop growing because they're just kind of breaking off. They're not strong enough to get more length. Any texture has a certain limit to the length that it will be able to achieve. So when it starts to get kind of PC at the bottom, you trim that up to the strongest point because that strong line is gonna create the foundation for the internal layers. Okay, so now as you can see, we've got this line straight, okay? This line is straight and it's as strong as it needs to be. So this is a strong length that can support layering. Next thing we're gonna move into is front layering. So the question is, how do you layer it in a way that it doesn't from the profile look like it's dragging back and that there isn't so much layering in the front that it's kind of disconnected from the sides. You simply take a section from the top of your head to the back of your ear. So we'll go straight to the back of the ear and we'll comb everything in front of that down and everything behind that gets combed out of the way. This is a client or your length, okay? So let me spin you around so you can see this maybe better. This right here, 
Okay, this is your length. This that's in front of the ear can be front layers. As long as you don't take any of this stuff back here shorter, you'll make sure that you don't cut it too far back. So the easy way to do it is just determine how short do you want the layers in the front and then know that the layers in the back stop right behind the ear. So all you have to do is say, okay, I know that this can't go any shorter and this is where I want the layers in the front. So I'm just gonna draw a line from here to there. That means that if you go into a salon and you don't want a ton of layers, you've got two different ways to approach it. One way is to say, well, I don't want these layers to be too short. The other way is to say, I don't want them to cut too far back. Now, I'm actually gonna use, I wanna show you another little trick here. I'm actually gonna use the razor on this because I get a lot of people saying, well, what about razors? I hear that razors, for instance, can't be used on curly hair, can't be used on thin hair. They make your hair look frizzy. They absolutely can. The way a razor functions, depending on how you use it, is a razor will actually, if I put this in your hair and I do this, it'll actually strip your hair away into nothing. And when it strips it away into nothing like that, it can make those ends look a bit frizzy. However, if I use this more like an edge of a shear, or a knife blade, if you will, it still cuts a very strong edge to the hair and therefore won't create that same illusion. So many times when I'm doing layers, I'm gonna start Diana's layers, let's say, at the, right at the chin for now, right? Just for, so you guys can see. So I'll start at the chin, but if I just cut into this and use this like basically like a razor or like a knife edge, that is not going to break up those ends into softness, that's gonna leave you a blunt end. It just makes it easier for me to draw that line sometimes versus using shears. It's not the tool that's the problem, it's the way you implement the tool that can be the problem. I will say on curly hair, you have to be a little bit more careful. Curly hair can have a tendency to show those, that frizz a little bit more, but I still maintain that there are situations where you can get away with using a razor on curly hair, which is very much how it's used. Now, I'm purposely not really worried about making these blend very well right now. I kind of actually want this to be a little bit choppy because at the end, I'm gonna show you how to go in and take that choppiness out. Whether you're going to a stylist or whether you're doing this at home, I wanna show you the techniques that I use and how you texturize ends and not thin hair out. Um, so now that we have the front layers, the question is, well, what about the back layers? How do we actually achieve that so that we don't thin those ends out? Length dictates the length of layers. The longer your hair is, the longer these layers back here need to be to balance. If your hair is this long and I cut your layers this short, they're not gonna make any sense. If you cut the layers that short, you're gonna get a little cap of volume here, and that's what people tend to think. I want more volume on top, so I need to cut the layers shorter on top so that they're lighter. You'll get a cap of volume, but what'll actually happen is you'll get a little bit of volume and then it'll collapse right where that bend ends, and then this stuff doesn't have the ability to have that volume in the, in the roots because it's so long, and all of a sudden you have this little cap, and then you have hair that kind of hangs there, and it doesn't really create shape. This is what we're talking about in this video. So how do we determine what length is right for the layers? Well, simply, what I do is I go to a person's occipital bone. Now that occipital bone is the bone that's in the back of your skull, okay? So it's that bone that's right here. If I take a section here, and I comb this hair up, Okay, straight up, and I grab the hair at the occipital bone. Okay, so for Diana's right here. I grab this, and I pull that hair up, and I layer it this way. What I know is that this hair is essentially, that's the length, right? As long as I don't cut anything in front of this shorter than this hair, when they all fall down, they're going to balance correctly. After you do that, then you might be able to take the layers a little bit shorter depending, but that is always the place that I will start out at. So first things first is I will take a section and I'll comb it up and I'll make sure that I start cutting those layers on top, pulling them all straight up. I don't do this, pull them out, but that's all straight up to ensure that I don't cut any of those layers too short or too much. So I pull this up, spin this around here a little bit so you can see. I'll pull this up and what I see is there's my hair from the occipital bone. So I know that I can get away with cutting all of this stuff off and it's not going to be too short. So I'll go in. Now, one thing that I do is when I cut, I almost never blunt cut things. I always point cut into it. And the reason I do that is because it leaves the ends strong, but it also breaks them up. 
This is gonna help them blend a little bit more. Now, as I said, at the very end of this, we're gonna go through how I break those up even more to blend them even better, but I always start here because it gives me a good foundation to work with. So I'll go in, I'll take that length off, and then I'll just cut all of the top, and I'll use that as my guide. I'll pull all of it up the same way, and ultimately make sure that none of it goes shorter than that piece that I just cut. Layering in the front and layering in the back. How do you know how long to have the layers in the front? You always want the layer in the front to be as short as the layers in the back or shorter. If you have it longer, these layers back here will push hair forward. It will make it look like you have a bob and then hair that hangs below the bob. Now that I've got the layers in the back shorter, now the last thing that I will do is make sure that there is a little bit of connection from the layers in the, this top layer to the layer to the length. The way I do that and making sure at the same time that I don't over layer it is what you'll see a lot of times is people will comb this down and they'll take a section and they'll pull it straight out from the head like this and then they'll cut all that layer, all this stuff off and layer all that. That is what tends to make hair look thin. That's a fine technique on shorter hair, but as the hair gets longer, you're gonna find that it's gonna make those ends look very thin. You're adding a lot of layers in this section right here, which is from the recession to the occipital bone. All of this stuff down here, you basically want that one length. So we don't wanna pull that out and layer it. That's why I pull everything up and layer it to ensure that I don't over layer this. Now, one thing that I can do, if I want that to blend a little bit better, is I can go in and I can take, at the very end, after I've layered the top, and I can take some of this stuff on the sides, pull it out diagonally from the head, so it's not up and it's not out, it's diagonal, and when I do this, sometimes there'll be a little corner in here where the hair will look like this, and I can take that little bit of corner out, and that will blend it into the bottom length, so it'll give it a little bit more layering, Right, so it's like this stuff. I can take some of that stuff out and it'll give it a little bit more layering, blend it a little bit more, but it'll still keep it from looking too thin at the ends. Okay, we got our hair dry. <laughs> okay, well you guys don't know <laughs> behind the scenes. I'm drying her hair. She starts watching something on her phone and it makes her emotional. She starts crying and I go, babe, you can't be crying when I'm showing people what I did to your hair. This is horrible. <laughs> so yeah, I promise you, her crying has nothing to do with what happened here, okay? <laughs> This, <laughs> if she looks sad, it's because she's watching all the things online, whatever. Now I wanna go through and just show you how I actually texturize hair to ensure that we get a nice movement and blend everything, but we don't end with thin hair. So I use texturizing shears to texturize hair, okay? And what that means is that the actual blade is smaller than the hole next to the blade. And what that does is it means that it's cutting out less hair. Whereas if you look at a conventional thinning shear, you'll notice that the blade and the hole are the exact same side. Effectively, it takes out half of the hair. So these are a lot more aggressive in how much hair they remove, which is a lot harder to control how much I'm taking out. Then what I do is I'll go in and I follow the exact same sectioning pattern that I did for the haircut. I'll pull the hair up and I look at the very ends. And if those ends look too strong or too chunky or too thick, I go in and I break those ends up a little bit just to break up the line. Here's what I'm not doing. I'm not going down here and thinning out a bunch of hair. What happens with people is even though your layers are so are long, the ends are so thin that they're those layers are acting as though they're a lot shorter. So now we've done, we've texturized all those layers. Now, if you look right here, you'll see that looks a little bit choppy. Part of that is her color. Part of that is because I cut it choppy. So what I'll do there is I'm gonna go through and essentially do the same thing I've been doing, which is just texturizing those ends a little bit. So I'll take just that section and I'll just, you can see how blunt that looks. But if I go in and just break up some of that a bit, lighten it up, it's going to blend a lot more and you're not gonna see it quite as blunt and choppy looking. So usually just texturizing those ends a little bit will help to take out some of that bluntness and give it a much nicer blend and still give you, you can see how much better that blends now and it'll still give you all of that movement. But now you can see if I go through and I comb her hair out, you can see that even though she's got a lot of layers, you're not seeing these layers in her hair. They all blend in and it'll create the illusion almost that it's one length, aside from the layers in the front, you can't hide those. 
So just following those simple steps, I know that I'm not gonna layer hair too short, I'm not gonna make it look too thin at the ends, I'm not gonna have too many layers in the front, and I'm gonna have layers that blend. Now what I'll do is I'll go through and style her hair so that you can actually see what this shape actually creates. And then in the next video, which I will be linking at the end of this video, we'll actually walk you through the styling process. Now you can see the difference from when we started to now. By creating the layers in the right areas and leaving them long enough, we've created shape in the correct area. We've created volume in the areas that accentuate cheek structure, that accentuate bone structure, that lift the face and the eye up. All of these things are very important. We're giving the hair a lot of movement, a lot of texture, and we're more importantly avoiding the triangular shape that tends to happen when you're dealing with long hair, especially if it's not layered. So what I need you to do right now is go watch one of these two videos, either part one of this series so you can understand all of the mistakes that people make and how to avoid them, or this video right here. So you go do that now, and we will see you in the next video.